Good evening, everybody. My name is Rick Stockle, and I am a realtor with Newman & Dunn Real Estate in Richmond, Virginia. Today is Tuesday, November 13th, 2012. Well, Clear Capital came out with its Home Data Index for October 2012 last week. Clear Capital is a premium provider of data in real estate asset valuation, investment, and risk assessment. I find that the data that comes out of these monthly reports from Clear Capital most closely resembles what I see in the Richmond housing market. There are other firms and providers of uh, housing data, but I find that the, uh, the Clear Capital uh, reports actually mirror again what I see happening in Richmond. Uh, I tend to use that data, especially for my sellers, in uh, letting them know what the trend is uh, for pricing on homes. Uh, right now that trend is, is uh, showing a slight increase. Also, it's showing that the, uh, the actual inventory of competing homes has really dwindled over the past, uh, I'd say, 12 months or so. Uh, but anyway, let's get right to it. What actually happened in October? Well, there were quarterly price gains in October, uh, even a, a bit stronger than uh, what we had seen in September. October did mark the fifth consecutive month of quarter-over-quarter quarter home price growth. Again, that is a very positive trend for sellers out there. And uh, nationally, the price has edged up 2.1% over the rolling quarter. The, uh, the West showed the strongest gains again, as they did in the previous quarter. The West showed uh, gains of 3.7%. And the South, where the Richmond market is located in, had a 2% gain uh, over the rolling quarter in housing prices. So. Overall, pretty good information and pretty good data for the Richmond market. Uh, one of the things, uh, if you put us uh, in a comparative mode versus the other metropolitan statistical areas, Richmond actually was among the lowest performing major metro markets. Again, we did have positive quarter over quarter growth of about 1.7%. So while we are showing positive uh, pricing growth, we were among the uh, the lower or the least performing major metro mar metro markets. That said, on an annual basis, Richmond showed growth of 4.2 percent, uh, which actually is is traditionally what the Richmond market had shown prior to the big uh, housing bubble. Richmond typically showed about three to four percent growth on an annual basis in housing prices, and uh, I kind of hope that we get back to that type of market. Uh, the boom and bust market is best left for California, New York, and major metro areas. Uh, I, I tend to like the slow but steady growth. Uh, call me the turtle in the uh, the turtle versus the hare uh, marathon. So uh, some other good news about the Richmond market that came out of this uh, October report. The REO saturation rate, uh, and, and what that means, the REO saturation rate is the rate of foreclosures uh, verse uh, or relative to the total number of sales. So if you have uh, 24 closures and a total of uh, 100 sales, you've got a saturation rate, REO saturation of 20%. Well, Richmond actually came in at 14%. That is uh, relatively low and very low uh, based on, on prior quarters. Just for example, in Columbus, Ohio, their REO saturation rate was 26.7 percent, which means more than uh, one out of four homes that sold uh, were foreclosures. Let me look and see. I think St. Louis, Missouri was up around one out of every three homes. They were actually 30.2 percent. Uh, Philadelphia showed a 7 percent saturation rate, REO saturation rate, and Boston, which has really been starting to move, uh, and, and gain some traction in, in housing sales had a saturation rate of 5.7 percent. So again, overall, uh, pretty good uh, movement in, in the Richmond housing market. I continue to foresee that we'll have price gains again next year between 3 and 4 percent um, if the unemployment rate uh, dips maybe below 7.5 percent and we start to show some strong employment uh, I think we can actually hit about 5% uh, price growth. But it, it's been a, a pretty bad five years. Uh, we've definitely hit bottom and are slowly working our way upward. 
So for sellers, uh, it looks like you'll probably get a little bit more money for your home sales. For buyers, understand that we are still at the bottom of the market, so you may pay a little bit more next year versus what you could get today, uh, but you're still buying at a, a very low point in the market. And of course, interest rates, which are being subsidized by the Fed, uh, there's no doubt about it. If the Fed wasn't buying mortgage-backed securities, interest rates would be half a point, one percent higher. Uh, but why not take advantage of these low interest rates? Your buddies in the government are, are keeping them low for you. So even if prices do move up a little bit, it still is an absolute grand time to, uh, to buy a house and lock in on a 30-year fixed rate, or even better, if you can get a 15-year fixed rate, um, I think you'll you'll be very happy 15 years from now. So anyway, that is my economic update for the Richmond housing market. As always, feel free to call or text me at 804-218-3143. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have, and I look forward to talking to you next month.